the God concept then was an aid and an important one to man's emerging ego. To develop its sense of specialization, the ego forgot the great cooperative venture of the earth. If a hunter literally knows his relationship with an animal, he cannot kill it. On deeper levels, both animal and man understand the connections. Biologically, the man knows he has come from the earth. Some of his cells have been the cells of animals, and the animal knows he will look out through a man's eyes. The earth venture is cooperative. The slain beast is tomorrow's hunter. In terms of ego consciousness, however, there were stages of growth, and the god concepts that spoke of oneness with nature were not those that served the ego's purposes in the line of development as you understand it. For a while, such techniques worked. Always, however, there was the undeniable inner self in the background, man's dreams, his biological and spiritual integrity, and these in one way or another were always before him. In your probability, you did allow the inner self some freedom. Therefore, the so-called egotistical consciousness was not given complete sway. It remained flexible enough so that even hidden in its God concepts there were symbols of greater reality. Your system deals with physical manipulability again, and the translation of creativity into physical form. An exterior separation had to occur for a while, in which consciousness forgot, egotistically speaking, that it was a part of nature, and pretended to be a part. It was known, however, and unconsciously written in the cells and mind and heart, that this procedure itself would only go so far. When man's consciousness was sure of itself, it would not need to be so narrowly focused. Then, the true flowering of humanity's consciousness could begin. Then the ego could expand and become aware of realities it had quote-unquote earlier ignored. You have put yourselves in a position where your consciousness must now become aware of the probable pasts and probable futures in order to form for yourselves a sane, fulfilling, and creative present. Ego consciousness must now be familiarized with its roots, or it will turn into something else. You are in a position where your private experience of yourself does not correlate with what you are told by your societies, churches, sciences, archaeologies, or other disciplines. Man's quote-unquote unconscious knowledge is becoming more and more consciously apparent. This will be done under and with the direction of an enlightened and expanding egotistical awareness, that can organize the hereto neglected knowledge, or it will be done at the expense of the reasoning intellect, leading to a rebirth of superstition, chaos, and the unnecessary war between reason and intuitive knowledge. When, at this point now of mankind's development, his emerging unconscious knowledge is denied by his institutions, then it will rise up despite those institutions and annihilate them. Cult after cult will emerge, each unrestrained by the use of reason, because reason will have denied the existence of rampant unconscious knowledge, disorganized and feeling only its own ancient force. If this happens, all kinds of old and new religious denominations will war, and all kind of ideologies surface. This need not take place, for the conscious mind, basically now, having learned to focus in physical terms, is meant to expand, to accept unconscious intuitions and knowledge, and to organize these deeply creative principles into cultural patterns. The great emotion of love has been thus far poorly used, yet it represents even the biological impetus of your being. Your religions, in a large measure, have taught you to hate yourselves and physical existence. They have told you to love God, but rarely taught you to experience the gods in yourselves. Now, in one way or another, religions have always followed again the development of your consciousness, and so they have served its purposes and yours, and they have always reflected, though distorted, those greater inner realities of your being. In historic terms as you understand them, the quote-unquote progression of religion gives you a perfect picture of the development of human consciousness, the differentiation of peoples and nations, and the growth of the ideas of the quote-unquote individual. There is nothing wrong with the concept of an egotistically based individual being. I am not suggesting, therefore, that your individuality is something to be lost, thrown aside, or superseded. Nor am I saying that it should be buried, submerged, or dissolved in a super-self. 
I am not suggesting that its edges be blurred by a powerful unconscious. I am saying that the individual self must become consciously aware of far more reality, that it must allow its recognition of identity to expand so that it includes previously unconscious knowledge. To do this, you must understand again that man must move beyond the concepts of one God, one self, one body, one world, as these ideas are currently understood. You are now poised in your terms upon a threshold from which the race can go many ways. There are species of consciousness. Your species is in a time of change. There are potentials within the body's mechanisms in your terms not as yet used. Developed, they can immeasurably enrich the race and bring it to new levels of spiritual and psychic and physical fulfillment. If some changes are not made, the race as such will not endure. This does not mean that you will not endure, or that in another probability the race will not, but that in your terms of historical sequence, the race will not endure.